Good to have you here today. What a blessing. We're continuing in our series, We Are the Bridge, and we've been focusing in on spirit. We are spirit. And uh, I'm going to be sharing this still, continuing with this, uh, this particular thought. I'm going to share uh, the aspect of how um, Jesus shares a certain aspect of how he works and how he kind of expects things to, to kind of go between us and him. And we're in chapter 14 of John, and I'm going to start with verse 9. Philip is making a statement. Before Philip makes this statement, Jesus goes into this whole thing about, I'm going to go prepare a place for you, and it's going to be awesome, and, and where I go, you'll be with me, and it sounds like the coolest thing in the world. And then he makes a statement, and wherever, where I'm going, you know where I'm going, and you're with me. And Philip says, hold the phone. I don't know where you're going. I don't get it. So Philip, I love honesty. Don't you love honesty? I love the fact that you don't make God nervous when you say, hey, God, I don't get this. It's okay to come to the Lord and go, I, I, have, I don't quite understand all these things. And, and so Philip says, I don't get it. Just He says, Philip, Philip says, hey, look, just show us the Father. I've been with you for 14 chapters. I know I should have this down, but I don't get it. I don't understand it. Just show me the Father and we'll believe. We just show, right, fellas? Just show us the Father and we'll believe. And this is what Jesus says. Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip? and yet you still don't know who I am. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you don't know who I am? In this statement, this amazing truth that Jesus is expressing, he, he, he knows the heartbeat of humanity, and the heartbeat of humanity and the, the makeup of humanity is they put a premium on what they see. They, what I see makes more sense than what I believe. If I see it, if I, when I get a bad report, I, I look at the bad report and it overrides a lot of stuff that I know but I see, what I see makes a bigger impact on my life. And Jesus has been with them for 14 chapters. And so he said, you know what? They're going to get this. I'm going to do all these cool miracles. They're watching me. They're going, man, no one's done this stuff before. Who, who gives sight to the blind? Who heals? Who, who raises the dead? This is awesome. We, and so he's expecting them by hanging out with him that you know him. Church, here's the thing. It is possible for all of us to be in a, in a Philip type of mindset. We've been around church. We go to church. We, are, we have a Bible. We, we open it up every once in a while. We kind of have an understanding. You have concepts and principles at beck and call, but do you know him? And there's the key, and I want you to see what God is saying. In the, at the beginning of this chapter, he goes, I'm going to go prepare a place, and, and you're going to know where, what I know, and you're going to be with me, and wherever I go, you'll be. And this is going to be so awesome. Do you realize that he's saying, by you watching me, it produces this knowledge, this understanding and if we know him, if we just pursue knowing him, then the rest of it follows. All right? I, I, I'm really, this is where I believe Jesus is telling us at the bridge and the body of Christ, quit pursuing the power gifts and the power, know me, and the rest of it will follow. Leave, yeah, leave the principles and concepts Know me, and the, you'll live it like, like it's, it's the most natural thing in the world because you know me. Notice what he says. Have I not been with you, Philip, that you don't believe and know who I am? Let's look at it again, Philip. And yet you still don't know me. Have I not been with you all this time, Philip? And yet you still do not know me. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. And Jesus is saying, if you look at me, you get Father. You understand Father. There isn't a distinct difference between who I am and who he is. And y'all, to be honest with you, we are Jesus' representatives here on earth. And when they look at you, they should be catching a glimpse of Father. Amen. They'll know you're my disciples because you're so good looking. <laughs> They'll know you're my disciples because you're so smart. They'll know you're, and, I, and this, is, this is the weird thing. They'll know you're my disciples for your love. And you go, well, there you go. I, I just love God. I love, I hate people. I love God, but I hate people. No, he made, it, he made it real clear. They'll know you're my disciples for your love, one for another. It's easy to love God, but how that's expressed is in loving one another. And they'll know you're my disciples by your love, one for another. This is not, it was never meant to me me be an I faith business. iPhone, I faith, just me, all of me. What? No, it was meant to be love for others. 
And he says here, he says, have you not known me? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father's in me? The words, look at that. The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me and does his work through me. And this is, this is, this is where I want to get to. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or equal to, same weight as, or at least believe because of all the works you've seen me do. God is saying, believe in me as, as if God has sent me, or believe the road signs in your life that I've taken you through. God is saying, the road signs in your life are as powerful and strong as you believing in me. In this room, there are people filled with stories of the road signs of our life, church. You remember when, and something happened, and you believe God, and something happened, favor came out on you. Hit a, you hit a wall, and it was all over, and then all of a sudden, the favor of God brought you through it, above it, around it. I mean, he brought you through. Come on, church. We cannot, God is saying, I'm going to elevate for you to see me in the road signs of your life. Even before you knew me. <laughs> God is so good that he, he can even take the most vilest situation and make beauty out of ashes. This is the God we serve, church. If you can't see me here, see me in the road signs. Y'all, every one of you have a story of God's grace and goodness, and you also have a story of harm and trauma and drama because we all do life, y'all. Things were said and not said. I mean, we all do life. Yet God from heaven looked down at your worst place in your life. He looked down and said, I see value. Worthy to be, to be saved. I see value. Come on, girl. Come on, God. We, we got this, buddy. Let's do this. Holy Spirit came alongside and said, no, you're worthy. You're worthy. All heaven is looking for you. Value, value, value. He goes on to say, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me, man, you got to know him, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done. Notice, knowing him and believing him, it allows the works of God to flow through you. You pursuing the works of God, you realize you could be that guy. And I, of course, there's so much to this, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. That scripture that freaks every Christian out, didn't we do all these things in your name? And every believer goes, man, I don't want to be in that line. Who wants to be in that line? Didn't we do all these things? Didn't we cast out? Didn't we do all these awesome things, these really cool, monstrous things that, that everyone, you know, gets, like, ministry things out of? Didn't we, like, you know, sell oils and support my ministry? Look what I'm doing and look, look what I've done. Didn't we do all these really cool things in your name? Didn't we do supernatural, superhuman, amazing things in your name, in your name? And, and Jesus, I, I, I didn't know who you were. He didn't say, I knew you, then you fell. No, he said, I never knew you. It is possible to, be, to get caught up with principles and processes and, and object lessons and theology and never know God. And, and you have to see how he says this. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me, the doing follows the believing in. Not believing for, I believe in, and the doing takes care of itself. The mighty works, I'm not pursuing the Signs and wonders followed those that believed in his name. Can we just say, I'm just going to follow him. And you know what's going to follow me? Signs and wonders are going to follow me. I'm not pursuing signs and wonders. Look at this. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me and will do the same works I have done, and even greater. And you know what I believe the greater? The greater is no longer one man, Jesus. It's Jesus in each one of us, and we go everywhere we go. That's the greater mercy, the greater grace, the greater power that all of us carry, the power of the resurrection in each one of us to fulfill the ministry of reconciliation, each one of us. Oh, this is too good to be true. He says, greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. You can ask me for anything. Now, now comes the, the, the part of, uh, of supernatural, you know, the, the, the cool stuff, right? He says, so you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. And we automatically, for some reason, we read that scripture, 
we go, well, hey, yeah, that's, that means I can, I can uh, do the cool stuff like lay hands on the sick and maybe the cool stuff like, you know, have a prophetic word for everybody or maybe the cool stuff like raise the dead. Yeah, that's what that means. If I, if I ask anything in his name, what if, what if asking anything in his name meant ask him to get you to know him better? What if that was all that it was? I, I just want to ask you, God, to know you better. And then knowing him, all these other things, we're just an expression of knowing him. Instead of asking for power, how about knowing him and the power flow through you? What do you think, church? I, I'm just saying, Jesus is saying, have I not been with you? Ha haven't I been with you and you're still pursuing the stuff? It, have I not been with you? Pursue me and the rest of the stuff will follow. Ask anything in my name because you know me. Church, this whole message is about do you know him? And when you know him, this is the amazing thing. When you know him, an amazing thing happens in your, in your life. Your will, his will, like you think a certain way, and who do you think brought the thought process in your heart? Who do you think is measuring out every step for your success? And you think it's your will, and the Father goes, man, I like the way you think. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit puts stuff in your heart because you're walking with him, and it says, you know, it'd be good to make a left about now. I think I'm going to make a left. Man, you're awesome, dude. God, that was awesome. The Lord is for you. And in, in operating in the supernatural is to know him. And the rest of it follows. This is what we ask for. It should be what we ask for. I just want to know you, God. And then he'll place you in situations. And you'll walk into situations where there needs to be the right word at the right time, the right thing, the right step, the right, every aspect. And you walk in going, you know, I think. I'm going to speak this, and the Lord God will say, I like the way you think, buddy. Know him. Know him. we got to change the way we think. See, with deep, I don't know where, I mean, I kind of do know. That you have to understand, the world's principle, and it's a satanic one, is not to trust Father. He started from the very beginning when he told Eve, did God say you can't try? He's holding out on you. And the enemy's greatest lie is for you not to trust Father, to somehow feel like he's holding back on you. And, and, and things happen in our life, and, and then some will say, well, if God was a God of love, this wouldn't happen. And, and I get trauma and drama, and I get the enemy, and I get the fallen state that we're in, and there's some natural things that happen. that you just, It's just going to happen. Stuff's going to happen in our life. Jesus even said, in this world, you're going to confront trials of many kinds. There's going to be struggle. But be of good cheer, which means not to be happy or the struggle, be happy in it. Be joyful in it. Why? Because God's overcome the world. Jesus overcame the world. And if Jesus overcame the world, then we're going to overcome the world. That's what he's saying. So there's got to be a different mindset. How do, how do we get this mindset? We, we don't put all our emphasis in our flesh. Matter of fact, this flesh is your mountain that you bring to worship God. And you cast this mountain into the sea of his love. You bring. Does, it, does every Sunday morning feel like we should be in church? Every Sunday morning, here's the thing. We never had an option growing up. It's Sunday morning. I'm shining my shoes. I'm shining my dad's shoes. We're getting ready. There's no question about it. My, my younger, one of my younger brothers didn't figure this out, and there's always trauma and drama at the house. I mean, my Danny was always like, uh-uh, what? It's Sunday, so what? I said, no, come on, you, you, brother. It's, this is what we do, right? And so my mom is very specific. She put out our clothes. This is what you'll wear. Mom, I don't want to. This is what you wear. Okay, mom. Okay. <laughs> There's a word that we use. It's, in a, it's, it's not even a real word. Not even a real Spanish word. It's a family word. A word that we kind of we kind of mixed to get to mix it up to mean something. It means when you get dressed up, you get dressed up to go to, to church, and he would she would say, "I mira," which means, "Hey, look, you look very proper." And she would say, "Te miras tan giri." Giri was the word. Giri. I, I don't even. It's not even a word. We made it up among our family. <laughs> But it sounds so good that you're, look, you're looking good. And mom would say, okay, all my boys are going to look this way. But mom, can't, no, all my boys are going to look this way. Mom, but all my boys are going to look this way. Okay, mom. But, but Danny had another idea. And we would get like, I mean, I mean, I would say, Danny, please. Mom, you know, mom's only got, she's got a short fuse. Come on, she's got like how many kids? I mean, please, come on. All I'm saying, y'all, there wasn't an option. We, we didn't have a question. We came to church. 
We just, because we, we love being there, and we just learn to love being there. Shall we go to church today, Lord? I'm asking you. No, we're going to go to, you know, Shoney's or something. No, we, <laughs> is there a Shoney's in Tulsa? I don't even know. I don't know where that came from. There isn't. I don't know where that came from. Anyway, so what I'm saying. You got to change the way you think about who God is. We're not led by our flesh. We bring this flesh as a sacrifice to God, and we look so jeedy. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. Y'all, this is not the focus of my life. My flesh, your flesh, is never, was never meant to be the focus of your life. Satisfying your flesh wasn't it. It was walking in the Spirit. And you'll be free from the flesh. It was the coolest way to live. The kind he will find acceptable. This is true the way we worship. How do we worship? We worship, we press in beyond feeling and emotion, and we get into spirit. It's because of who God is. See, I don't praise God to get God to do something for me. I praise God for who he is. He's worthy of, whether I'm having a good day or a bad day, it doesn't matter. He is God, King, Jehovah, Lord of my life, and he's worthy of praise whether it's a good day or bad. I will not let my temporal life determine my worship for an eternal God. We don't do that. No, no, he is eternal God. He's worthy of praise beyond circumstance, beyond emotion. It's who he is. I'm going, he's worthy. Uh Uh-uh. This flesh doesn't define who he is. My spirit does. My spirit says he's worthy. So I live by spirit. He says, don't copy. He says, this kind of find, uh, this is truly the way we, we worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. And this world has an animosity towards God, a, a distinct opposite. We're not going to follow that. We change the way we think. Don't copy the behavior and custom of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. The way you think, church. Then you'll learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Y'all, this is what I'm trying to get you to do. When you begin to change the way you think, all of a sudden circumstances have a different feel to it. You're going to get hit with stuff and how you react or respond. We can react in the flesh, which is, is, is going to be common. And don't feel guilty and shameful because you did. Just realize God's going to go, okay, let's try it again. Get back up. Dust yourself off. Let's get back in the game. But here's what I want you to realize. There is a road sign of faith being prepared for you at this very moment. It's designed for you to rule over it. It's designed for you to have victory over it. And it'd be a road sign of your life, of his grace and his goodness. And as you operate in a new thought process, as you've sacrificed your life and now you think differently, there's a a great road sign of victory and faith being prepared this very moment. And God has an expectation, like a good coach, for you to win this one, for you to take a swing. You know, there's there's a, man, you can overthink baseball, any, any sport, where you get up there and it's, do I breathe or don't breathe when I swing? Do I breathe or don't breathe? Do I, do I exhale? You know, you can wind up overthinking all of it, right? You get into a groove with God, you walk by the Spirit. It's automatic. It's just automatic. I want you to see the way you change, the way you think, because you've, you've brought your life as a living sacrifice to God. You, you're not putting emphasis on that. Now, now you're ready for His Spirit, and the Spirit of God's going to rise up in you and give you the right word at the right time, and it's going to be a great road sign for you to build your life on. Have I not been with you? If, if not, if you can't believe, consider the road signs. Consider all that, all that you've experienced in God. So uh, I think Jesus' Jesus' expectation for you is to step up and be the difference maker. I believe this is Jesus' expectation of you is to whatever situation you're facing, facing is to be the one that makes the difference. Let me, let me show you a couple of scenarios here. In Matthew 8, so we got eight chapters walking with Jesus. And we get to verse 23. Then Jesus got into the boat. Now, before he gets into the boat, he says, we're going going, going to the other side. So if Jesus says we're going to the other side, do you think you're going to get to the other side? I mean, if he said it, so yeah, we'll get there. All right, so then Jesus got into the boat and started across the lake with his disciples. Suddenly, a fierce storm. Now, this fierce storm, it, it, it implies like a like an earthquake. In other words, this is not a normal storm on a normal lake. This is an unusual storm, something totally unusual that caught these sailors, these, these, 
these very experienced sailors caught them by surprise. So this, this something that's out of the ordinary, like all of us face things that are out of the ordinary in our life. A storm will come up, and all of a sudden, like, whoa, where did this come from? That's what's going on here, okay? And it says, suddenly a fierce storm struck the lake with waves breaking into the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. Really? Come on, really? But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. Didn't Jesus say, we're going to the other side? This is what I totally expected. If that boat would have sunk, it would have been the first submarine on, on ever. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking it would have been completely contained. I could see all the fish and say, hey, I want that one. All I'm saying is you have Jesus in your boat, and you're going through a storm. Everyone say, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. And they say, man, Jesus. And this is what I think was happening, y'all. I'm, I'm just talking like knowing my father, knowing how, you know, Jesus represents the father. I believe Jesus was, going, was saying, look, situation is going to come up. It's going to be on that boat, on that lake. I know it's coming. I'm Jesus. <sighs> I'm going to kind of just pretend I'm sleeping and see if one of the disciples will step up and take a swing. I mean, we're eight chapters into this relationship. Maybe one of the disciples will step up and take a swing. Look, look what he says after this whole situation. Jesus responded, why are you afraid? Really? If Jesus asked the question, why are you afraid, that would imply you didn't have to be. As if, I mean, you got to remember that who's talking. Jesus knows all things, and he's asking. In, in other words, there was a possibility that you didn't need to be afraid, which means You've been with me for eight chapters, man. One of you guys could have stepped up and go, let's take a swing at this. I believe that would have been a great road sign for one of the disciples. And I believe he's got a road sign set up for you right now. And he's sleeping in the boat. I just pretend. I'm gonna... Let's see what they're going to do. Let's see what they're going to do. He asks them, why are you afraid? Y'all, Jesus doesn't say stuff. He just doesn't say words. Why are you afraid? And then he kind of smiles and says, oh, uh, you have so little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves. He did not rebuke the disciples. You're not going to get rebuked because you missed something, y'all. You're going to go, you know, come on, we can do this again. I'm telling you, you've got to change your opinion of who God is. He is rich in mercy. He is grace. You can't disappoint him because he sees you completed already, seated in heavenly places. He sees you fit. He's, you're not losing this. And if you do miss a step, you say, no, 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 come on. That's not who you really are, buddy. Come on, let's get step up. He says, he got up, rebuked the winds and the waves, and suddenly there was a great calm. And the disciples were amazed. Who is this man? Really, after eight chapters, you're asking, who is this man? Yeah. The question is, do you know him, church? Do you know him? It's a funny thing when you go, you know, someone, you're, you're, a, you're a, a man of God, a woman of God, you believe in faith, and you believe in laying on hands, and you lay on hands on somebody, you don't feel a thing, and in Jesus' name, be healed. You walk away, and a week later, man, when you laid my, your hands on me, I was completely healed. Really? Yeah, God says, ah, go ahead, take a swing. You know, when you lay hands on people, you may not feel a thing. You're doing it in faith and in the name of Jesus. That's all you got, church. But take a swing. He says, who is this man? They asked, even the winds and waves obey him. Do you know him? In the situation we have, uh, he's been teaching for a long time. And the people are, it's getting late. And the disciples come up with a great solution. The disciples say, hey, we got a great solution for this problem. We got 5,000 men, which means they're wives or kids. We got, this is a tough situation, but we got a solution for you, Jesus. We got it covered. He says this in Luke 9, 12. Late in the afternoon, the 12 disciples, the guys, the brothers came to him. We got, we got a solution for you. They came, came to him and said, send the crowd away. See, man's, man's solution for any, any God-sized problem is send the crowds away. We can't do anything about this. Let's just change the page right quick. Let's do something different. 
Send the crowds away to the nearby villages and farms. This is logical. This is logic. So they can find food and lodging for the night. There is nothing to eat here in this remote place. But Jesus said to them, you feed them. What? Once again, you got to see Jesus doesn't say stuff. If he tells them, you feed them, that means we're in Luke 9. We got nine chapters of interaction, and Jesus saying, man, one of you guys could do this. You feed them. Maybe God is saying to you, you feed them. You step up. Take a swing. Now notice what they come back with. I love this. But we only have five loaves of bread and two fishes. We've checked it out. This is all we got. We're limited. And, it's, and we do this very naturally. They answered, or our, and I love, then they get a little, a little, a little kind of a little attitude. Little attitude. We only have five loaves of bread and two fishes, they answered. Or are you expecting us to go and buy enough food for the whole crowd? <laughs> there you go, Jesus. And we do this. God speaks by spirit, and we react by nat natural and, and nature. Well, this is my limitations, and God can't possibly do anything more than what I got. Don't you love it when Jesus says, bring it to me? See, he doesn't mind you calculating what you don't have. It's good. He's bring it to me, though, and let me take the limitations off. That's the kind of God we serve. It's so cool. He says, um, for there were about 5,000 men there. Jesus replied, tell them to sit down in groups of about 50. So each person, so the people all sat down. Jesus took the five loaves, took what was limited, took the five loaves and two fishes, looked towards heaven, and blessed them. This word blessed means to praise. He took the limitation and says, God, I thank you for this limitation. I thank you, God, and I praise you for meeting the need in Jesus' name. He did not go, oh, God, please, if you're only will, just a little while, a little time you take away from running the universe, and would you please just throw me a crumb or two of your attention, and if you could, just please, 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 please. No, he knows his heart. He knows the heartbeat of the Father. So he, he took the, limit, the limitations of our life and said, I thank you. This is the flesh that's been broken for you. Now let me multiply it. See, when you bring your broken flesh, like when you don't put your confidence in your flesh, then you're opening yourself up for spiritual, supernatural God stuff. Bring me the limitations. God, I can only believe you this much. Bring it to me. God, I don't understand all of it. Oh, bring me that. Oh, God, I don't know if I can really trust you. Oh, oh bring that to me too. It's beautiful how God takes our lack. Then in breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread and the fish to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. Notice he didn't leave out the disciples. They had lack of faith. No one was believing for this. But he said, buddy, I, come on, guys. I want you to be part of this miracle. I want to share this with you. Next time, next time you might get a road sign for yourself. Remember this road sign. And so the disciples went, well, of course we can, Jesus. Sure, we can do this. We're part of this miracle. <laughs> and God said, way to go. Don't you love the way God just loves to share his glory with us? And if we can't meet him on the first attempt, He's going to carry you to the next one. We have a good God, church. Come on. I hope you're getting a picture of God's goodness. One last one as I close, and I'm, and I'm only saying this to give you hope that I'll close soon. John 6, he's just fed in John's rendition, just fed all these people. And the people got so excited because they got their meal. And so they said, hey, uh, 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 same time tomorrow, as we, you know, you, you, we'll, I'll bring my tartar sauce. Are we ready for this? Same time? You, we're going to be on this, Jesus? We're gonna be? And they find out he's going to the other side of the lake. Oh, he's going to the other side of the lake. Oh, oh, so they all get in their boats and all follow him on the other side of the lake. And so they're all hanging out, kind of like waiting for him. Is that the dock? The dock? That's the dock right there? Okay, we're just going to stand over here and wait for him. They're waiting. It's about supper. It's about, you know, fish time. It's, we know what's going to happen. Okay. And here we go. They found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? <laughs> Don't you love the way the Bible works? 
They, they got there because they're expecting something, and Jesus knows their heart. And they, they, oh, you're here too? You go to this place? Well, we just happen to be here. No, we, we, get, we got here because we want something from you. And look at the way Jesus says. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you. And there's one thing of being around Jesus because of what you get from him. It's not bad, but there's so much more. Do you know him? And in knowing him, you have all of him. And in knowing him, you have all that you need. And he even says this. He says, he says I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I feed you or I fed you, not because you understand the miraculous sign, not because you grab, you understand the road sign of who I am and who I can be in you. You're not getting that part. You're only meeting me at your own need, which is lesser, but I can work with that. Do you know him? But don't be concerned about the perishable things like natural food, right? He says to them, spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you, for God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. You're looking at the food. Look at the Messiah. Only a Messiah could do this. But you're so caught up with the natural things of this world, you miss the Messiah. Church, let us not be so caught up with the natural things of our needs that we miss the Messiah. He wants to be known by you by heart to heart, face to face, and yet all we settle for is what's in his hands. No, no, don't miss the miraculous signs, the road sign in your life. They replied, we want to perform God's works too. Yes, that sounds bold. What should we do? And I love, we always go back to doing. Hey, God, uh, you know, fish and chips was really good yesterday. I want fish and chips today, and, and I think in the future, and if you really are the Messiah, what do we got to do to make that happen? What, what, can we, what we got to do something? Come on, we got to work some kind of deal out. I know. What do I got to do? This is the only work God wants from you. This is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. Believe, have confidence in. Believe, do you know him? Know him is what Jesus is saying. Believe in the one God has sent. Believe in me. All you see is what I can give you. You're missing the Messiah that stands before you. Church, let's not be like this. It's a possibility for us to wind up being like this. And they answered to him. They answered, show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What, what happened yesterday? Please, come on, guys. What can you do? What can you do after all? And now, now they get a little puffy, a little, uh, little pride. What can you do? After all, our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. The Scripture say, now they're going to tell Jesus about Scripture? He's the very word of life. He's the word become flesh. They're going, Wow. The scripture says, Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. Y'all, anytime you follow a man more than, a, than God Jehovah, we got problems in River City. And Moses was a good man, a good guy, but he was never meant to be the focus of their faith. Never. And he would argue with that point with you today. No, don't look at me. My father did. And now he offers you true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives you life to, and gives life to the world. So I decided to go back real quick. Now, I'm, I'm almost done. and I, I, know I, think I could be almost done. So I'm going to go back to Exodus 16. Exodus 16 is where this conversation happened, where he gave bread. And so in Exodus 16... The, the children of Israel are, are griping. Man, we don't have food. It was really cool back then in, in Egypt. It was great. You know what? It wasn't that great. It really wasn't. It was terrible. You were slaves, and come on. Ten plagues later, crossing the Red Sea, God providing wa you know, bitter water to sweet. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of road signs that they've seen along the way, but yet they deduced in chapter 16, God has brought us out this far to kill us. And so God... <laughs> And so, so the children of Israel are griping, and God hears their complaint. So he has a conversation with Aaron and Moses and says, listen, will you tell them I'm going to give them bread in the morning? Just tell them I'm going to give them bread in the morning. And I've heard their complaints. They're griping against me, but I'm going to give them bread. So what you're hearing here is a conversation between God and, and Aaron and Moses on what he will say. And so he says, so Moses and Aaron said to the people, like, this is what I want you to say to the people of Israel. 
By evening, you'll realize it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Next verse, please. In the morning, you'll see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaints, which you are against him, not against us. What have we done that you should complain against us? Okay, next verse. Then Moses added, okay, I want you to really important. I've said this before, but you have to look at this. The New Living Translation. God said, give them manna. In the conversation between him and God, Moses said, hey, can I add something? In the conversation, hey, can, God, hey, Dad, can I add something? And Moses added, the Lord will give you meat to eat in the evening. God didn't say anything about meat to eat in the evening. Moses added to the menu. Moses did. And bread to satisfy you in the morning, for he has heard your complaints against him. Look at the verse next, verse, verse 9, if you will. Then Moses said to Aaron, announce this to the entire community of Israel. Present yourself before the Lord, for he has heard your complaints. Next verse, please. And as Aaron spoke to the whole community of Israel, they looked out and toward the wilderness, and there they could see the awesome glory of the Lord in the cloud. Next verse. The Lord said to Moses. Now, Moses added, and now the, the conversation is to the people, and now Moses and Aaron are speaking to the people as if God. I have heard the Israelites' complaints. Now tell them, in the evening you'll have meat to eat, and in the morning you'll have all the bread you want. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Okay, here's what I want you to think about. Once again, I believe God was going, man, these people. You know, Moses, we have a little problem here. Why don't you tell them that they're going to have bread in the morning? And then God kind of said, and I'm just, this is the OJ's translation. Man, wouldn't it be good to give them something else? Oh, I don't know, like maybe a flying thing at night. Maybe a quail or a dove. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. Hey, Dad, can we add meat at night? What a great idea, son. I believe it's, that's the way he operates. You think that will that you have is your will? You think that thought process is just all about you? When you surrendered your life to him, he became you, you became him? That thought that you have are his thoughts now in Jesus? He dwells within you, and you're thinking that you're, that thought that you have is all you? Who, who do you think put that thought in there? For you to dream bigger than what you're capable of dreaming. To have a dream and go, you know what, God, what if? And God goes, what a great idea. See, you're looking for a word or waiting on a word. Maybe it's a word that you should speak that God can say, I like the way you think. You belong to him. You know him. His thoughts are your thoughts, church. Now, I know it can get goofy. You can think some weird thought, and the Holy Spirit will say, dude, let's, let's work on this. And he'll guide you to the right step. But I'm just telling you, maybe God is acting like a good father and saying, man, son, it'd be really nice if, oh, I don't know, something we could do something at night. You got any thoughts on that? Could we do something for them at night, Moses, my son? I mean, is anything going through your heart? Is there anything going on that you think might we could add a few things? Hey, Dad, why don't we add quail at night, meat at night? And the, and the proclamation that came from the father was, and you'll have meat at night and bread in the morning because the son started thinking like father and the father started to be seen through the son and they couldn't tell where one begins and the other starts and you're one with him and the thing he speaks you speak and it becomes your road sign remember when God was church that's who we are we are spirit and maybe God is waiting for you to proclaim the reality that you want to see in the natural well, in this natural world, but you've got to catch it first in the spirit because you're spirit. Know him, know him, know him, know him. So I leave you. Try it for a week. You know, I, can't, I can't say it enough. You are spirit. The spirit of God dwells within you. 
He's waiting for you to speak beyond the problem. Speak the solution. Speak it by the Spirit. And God says, I like the way you think. Because you're thinking like me. What do you think, church? This is too good. So try it for a week. Tifa, I am spirit. The road signs of my life empower me to speak the will of God into my natural world in every area of my life. Every area of my life, church. And I'm going to say this again. I am spirit. The road signs of my life empower me to speak the will of God into my natural world in every area of my life. Everyone put your hand on your heart right now. Father, in this area of my life, your word of life, and I thank you in advance for supernatural healing in this area of my life. I thank you for supernatural peace. I thank you for supernatural wisdom and power, God, in this vessel, that when I speak, I speak your words, God, not things that I've memorized in verses in Scripture, but actually your very word to the very situation because you're looking for someone to speak, God, and we will speak your will. So first we speak to our lives, the healed and delivered of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's all pray. Repeat after me, Father, and I call you my Father. I thank you for Jesus, and I receive him as Lord of my life. This is my beginning. I I see you, Father, as my Father. I see salvation as my salvation. I will never be the same again. I've been transformed from darkness into light. And I belong in Jesus' name. Amen.